Grinding is a little special. It's not only the brain, it's also the stomach, the feeling for the material. And so there are only a few people having this feeling in the stomach. Many of you know the story of April 1st being April Fools, right? But Hufschneid is no April Fools and this is not a joke, although the company did start on April 1st, 1991. And I have the great pleasure to be with my friend Ralph today. And we're gonna talk a bit more about the company history, more than what I just gave you. So Ralph, let's talk about this story, the journey, the growth, the potential, everything that you wanna talk about when it comes to Hufschneid. Mm -hmm. Hufschmidt, as you said, was founded at the 1st of April 1991, but the starting of uh, the founding of the company was done on Christmas 1990. Hmm? And because uh, my father was 49, working at a big tooling company in Germany at, as a CEO, and he thought about what should I do? Hmm? And I was studying at the University of Munich, and my professor told me that uh, I never will do it in a big company because I do not have a political correctness. So we both in, on Christmas were thinking what we will do in the, in the next years. And on Christmas, we made the decision, hey, let's do something together. The, uh, the old guy having the network, the knowledge, uh, knowing the people, that's most important. Huh? And the young guy coming from the university with all the fancy ideas how it should work. Hmm? And so we, we decided to stick together. We made the, all the paperwork, and in Germany it takes more long time. And so, we get the graduate of the founding of a company at the 1st of April 1991. So that was our Fool's Day. Well, congr yeah, your Fool's Day. Well, congratulations on that start. And I always love when I hear a family story of a dad and a son working together, creating this growth. And I know that you wanted to focus on quality. You wanted to focus on service for your customers. All of this was incorporated, right? But here, and not just in Germany, but here in general, in our industry of manufacturing, sometimes it's difficult to find the right people to make and do the grinding, right? Yes. So how did you guys solve that problem? We had the same problem, as you mentioned. Uh, we found, uh, founded the company, and uh, a few years later, we started to think about doing of our own tools. Well, not may only making the design and the process design, doing it by ourselves. Hmm? So we built it, uh, the first step of the company here hmm, in stone, hmm, but we didn't manage to find the right people here because grinding is a little special. It's not only the brain, it's also the stomach, the feeling for the material. And so there are only a few people having this feeling in the stomach. Hmm. And it's in Germany, as I always say, it's like the same in Switzerland with the swatches. It's only one valley hmm, with nine months of cold and three months of snow. Hmm. And here in Germany, it's with uh, Schwäbische Alb. Hmm. It's the same. It's nine, nine months cold and three months snow. And there you find the people to, to having fun of grinding grinding in tungsten carbide or in other materials. So we tried to find the people hmm? and the easiest way was to search for a company where the owner was in retirement or wants to retire, having nothing to, nobody to follow him. Hmm? And it took us yeah, at least six months to find a company. And when we managed to, to buy this company, hmm, but not for the machines and not for the, the plant, we only bought the company for the people because we needed them. Hmm. And having the company, when we started to transform it to our tool styles, they were used to build and grind standard tools. Hmm. But the way of our thinking or my thinking is a little bit different. Huh? So when we started and 
learn them to, to follow my, my constructions. Hmm? And some, some people say we are a little bit weird. Hmm? But today uh, we, are, we are living from these weird geometries because they are different, but they work faster. So when I'm thinking about your story that you're sharing, starting in 1991, April 1st, the Fool's Day, right? The growth and expansion. Thinking about what would be the best way to move forward isn't maybe by hiring a bunch of people, but acquiring the wisdom of some people who know how to do the grinding, right? What is the Absolutely. What has the growth been like? I know you've had a substantial growth, especially since the years of about 2003 and 2005, and we're talking now 30 years, 30 plus years yeah. in the making. Where, mm -hmm. What's the growth been like? The growth was uh, the first years as a consultant, we started with two, my father and me, and so till, let's say, 2003, with the first building, we had around 20 people mm. uh, doing all this consultancy with our customers, bringing new ideas to them, bringing new tool styles to them. To them. Mm. But starting uh, with the buying of a company, we switched to 35. They were 15 people. Mm. And, but this was at the end, the real starting point of Hofschmidt, Zerspannungssystem or cutting system in English. Um, because today, let's say 17 years later, now we are approximately 150 people. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's some pretty serious growth. And I think that goes toward something that we're going to talk about when it comes to Hofschmidt and your tooling, how focused you are on helping a customer go through a process to make sure that they're taken care of. Now, when we talk about Hufschmied tooling and what you guys go toward, I've worked in a world of manufacturing for quite a while and I understand what it's like to machine very difficult materials and sometimes tool diameters that I'm not used to playing with. But you guys, step by step, make sure that everyone is taken care of and you focused since the beginning of Hufschmied on taking care of that customer. Would you say that's what sets you guys apart? And if so, let's go into the details of what you've created here. We, we think so. We, we are very often, we start with the construction. We are also partner for, for our customers when we design a part and we ask it, is it uh, manufacturable? Can we do it like this? Or if the construction is finished, they ask us, which machine, which process with RPMs should I, should I bring into the machine because I need a new one? Hmm. Or do I have to redesign my machining park to do such things? And so we are trying to help the customer also with these things because to the, we are thinking we are not a tool maker, we are a process designer. Uh, we think to get more knowledge what the customer wants to achieve. And we have in, in the moment uh, six um, doctors working on material stuffs. So we are really focused to know as much as we can about the material we are machining or have to machine. And where we say really are doing benchmark tests with different materials or the same material from different suppliers, you should not think that steel from supplier A is the same when, st same when steel from supplier B. Very often that's not true. Mm. So we start there mm, and with all this knowledge, we are starting with our catalog standard tools. Mm. We see how they are behaving mm, and then at the end our process starts because when we make the process design we, we try out to get the right parameters to get the right tolerances or the right surface and this is our main main issue with all our technicians outside we have now 30 technicians outside only working for the customer to, to get the best fit process out of the machines and the machining part for customers for the material and the part he wants to machine. Mm. And 
at the end, all is said in one sentence. For us, specially standard. This is something that I think is really different to most of our competitors uh, we have, not only here in Europe, but all over the world. Special is standard is really significant to me, and I'll tell you why. I've worked in a world where I was machining platinum, Ralph, hmm? and all I ever received was drop ship tooling, and no one ever helped me understand how to machine it better. So having a company like yours to come in, take it step by step, help the process, save the life of the tooling, save the material, because the material is expensive, that's so important to me. But on top of that, we're sitting in a room right now where you have several machines, so if a customer yeah can't actually do some of the R&D in-house with some of your sales guys going in to help them. You support them here in your facility as well, yes. don't you? Mm -hmm. Yes, really. We have here now uh, six CNC milling machines. Mm -hmm. And I think day per day we achieve four to seven material proofs from a customer with a little description what the customer wants to achieve. And then we try to take a machine that is most similar to the machining part the customer has and then we try out to find the best process and with the best tooling and here we have six six engineers working five days a week to find out which is best fit for for the process and uh, try to to show the customer also the parts we have some samples here. Huh? For example, this is a little part. It's, it's not really, really terrific and in design. But with our process design, the customer was used to have 12 tools and a cycle time of 28 minutes. Huh? Now, at the end, we have four tools and a cycle time of two and a half minutes. Wow. This is our job we are doing. Huh? And if we it's, it's a good example, at least. But th this is the way we are working. Okay? And this is what we want to achieve. And at the end, the customer does not, does not care about the, the four tools. He sees only the two and a half minutes because he makes plenty of these things. Okay? And at first, he thought about 10 machines. Now he is having one. And this is, this is important. This, to me, is significant. Uh, and you've nailed all the points, but I just want to reiterate for the audience right now. Think about that amount of savings that a team at Hushmi can do for you. Think about that. All those tools for four tools. All those time savings down to two and a half minutes. And then lastly mention maybe having up to 10 machines to do this process now can do in one machine. Overall, not just the cycle time, which is on the forefront of most of our minds about how much money we're going to save, how many more parts we can make, how much we can get done, but the tooling costs, the machine costs, all of it being able to be done is pretty much directly related to your service and support, the quality of your tools, and making sure your customer was taken care of. I know that has to mean everything to your customer, and I have to ask you something a little personal right now, Ralph, if that's okay. When you look at these tools, do you kind of see them as your babies? And when you look at the customers, do the success stories truly bring you the joy that you like to share with the audience? Um, yes, they are my babies, at, at least yes. But not only mine, I only have some research engineers, they also have good ideas. And we, we, we copied American way of, of working. Mm. Um, and this is, this is very hard also for the new engineers to learn coming here. We test. We do not think about can it work. We try it. We make it and we try it. And every time to push the borders on a higher level. And this is something that, that's my point of view, my baby. I want to push the limits. And Sometimes it takes time and we find some new limits, but with all the new technologies and the new machines, the new RPMs you mentioned, the 90,000 RPMs, um, six months ago we uh, gave a new machine to the um, Technical University in Augsburg, hmm, 
we have 150,000 RPMs and we try out to find new processes with new tool styles for the next generation tooling. And at the end, uh, the first steps we made, we can save 90% of the cycle times. Mm -hmm. And this is pushing the limits, pushing the limits every time we, 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 we try. Mm -hmm. And also with the engineers, we want to know when the tool breaks. Mm -hmm. We want not, do not want to step or stop before. Mm -hmm. And we have, if you ask my wife, we have weird geometries. But we tried them. You see the graft is all the circulators. Um, the first design, also here, when I talk to my engineers, when the first tools were coming, coming out of a grinding ship, I think some of them would call the doctor to say, hey, try to, to bring him back to normal life. He's insane in the moment. Hmm? But when the first time it's running, hmm, and you see it works like you expect it. Hmm? Tony, it's, it comes, you know, it's good sex, really. Well, Ralph, I certainly appreciate you sharing this story. For everyone who's watching, this is Hof Schmidt. Think about it. Father, son, 1991, grow into 150 plus people and focused on your success. Not just selling a commodity product to drop ship on your desk or drop ship at your facility. They're coming to make sure you're taken care of. And if you can't do it in your own facility, we're standing in a turnkey center right now to help you as well. Ralph, thank you so much for bringing this awareness to our global audience at MTD. And we certainly appreciate you sharing this story. Thank you very much, Tony. And thank you also for listening.